All right, guys, just a couple of essential questions today that we're going to go over. So first off, what was the significance of Hamilton? That's Alexander Hamilton's economic plan, Secretary of the Treasury. What is significant about the plan that he's going to put forward that we're going to talk about with the different parts of it? And also, just to hit on it once again, a little bit of review for you will be to compare and contrast the Democratic Republicans and the Federalists and kind of delve a little bit more into what it is that those two groups believe and why they happen to believe that. Um, just to kind of review some of the knowledge that we know about the two individuals who are the leaders of these parties, first off, starting off with Alexander Hamilton, um, he will be the leader of the Federalist Party. Uh, Federalists believe in a strong national government. That is what is going to maintain order within the United States because most people, as Hamilton believes, the unruly mob are uneducated. They can't really take care of themselves or make good decisions. So you need a strong government there that's going to kind of keep everybody in check. That's going to have the power to do so as well. When it comes to economic focuses, he believes in trade, he believes in American industry, and ensuring that America is going to be self-sufficient, uh, that it's going to be a strong economic power that can compete on the world, uh, uh, on the global trade scene at the end of the day. And lastly, when it comes to the Constitution and how he interprets it, and how the Federalists are going to interpret it, they believe that the Constitution should be interpreted loosely meaning specifically, if the Constitution does not say that you are not allowed to do something, then that means you can do it. So, for instance, Hamilton wants to create a national bank. He'll look through the Constitution and say, okay, is there anything in here that says that I can't do something like that? No, there isn't? All right, cool. Well, I can create a national bank. And now to move on to Jefferson, talk about him and his opposing viewpoints. So Jefferson as opposed to Hamilton, wants strong state governments. He thinks because they're smaller, they're closer, they know their people better, it'll be able to protect your freedoms, your liberties, and look out for your best interests. So Jefferson, the Democratic Republicans, want strong state governments and a weaker national government. They want a more egalitarian economy, one that's based on farming, one that's going to be based upon um, creating your own goods at home. You know, if you can't make something yourself, going out to a small market, and purchasing it there, but everything kind of locally made. Um, no big trade scenes, no big industry or anything like that. And then lastly, Jefferson's interpretation of the Constitution is strict. If the Constitution does not say you are allowed to do something, then you are not allowed to do anything else. More specifically, um, if he's looking for something, for example, the bank. Uh, if Hamilton wants to create a Bank of the United States, Jefferson's going to go, well, is there anything in the Constitution that says that you are allowed to create that bank? Is there any rule in the Constitution that says you can make a bank? And if there's no rule in the Constitution that says that you can do that, well, then that means that you're not allowed to do it. He thinks that everything else that is not given to the federal government or the national government, any powers that aren't specifically listed as being those of Congress or the executive branch or the judicial branch are reserved instead for the states. Those are the state government's powers instead. So it kind of fits in line with that whole idea of wanting state governments to be more powerful than the national government. So the biggest of their disagreements is going to happen when Hamilton is going to propose his financial plan, being the Secretary of the Treasury, the economic and financial benefit and health of the United States is going to be his primary concern. So he is going to come up with a three-part plan that is going to seek to fix the United States financial situation because after the Revolutionary War, we have a ridiculous amount of debt that we have accrued because wars are going to be expensive. Think about how expensive the French and Indian War was for the British Empire. Much the same here. The American Revolution is expensive for the United States. So Hamilton is going to propose that we take all of the individual state debt. So every single state has its own debt. So Virginia may have like 10 million. New York may have like 15 million. Uh, Georgia may have like $2 million of debt that they are all individually responsible for. Every single state has it, and it's all different amounts and different numbers. Well, that doesn't look good. So what Hamilton ends up doing is he says, all right, what we should do is instead of having all of these random little debts in all of these states, let's instead take all of that debt together, amass it, compile it, and we will all pay it off equally. 
the whole United States will pay off this debt instead of each state kind of struggling to pay off its own debt individually. So what this is going to do is it's going to get all of these states that, you know, they worked together during the revolution, they fought together, but hey, we're, you know, a country now, it's after the Articles of Confederation, and, you know, states were kind of at odds with each other before, so now this kind of gets them working together again. Hey, you know, cool, Virginia's there, they're helping us out, paying off our debt, that, that, that's super great. It's also going to help the United States credit or their trustworthiness with other countries to increase as well. So other countries will be much more willing to trade with the United States and involve themselves in our economy. One thing it's going to do that's negative, however, is let's say hypothetically, okay, like uh, New York. A lot of fighting ha happens in U New York during the revolution. A lot of fighting happens. A lot of destruction, a lot of loss of life, a lot of resources spent. Their debt is significantly higher than Virginia's because Virginia has paid off a good amount of its debt already. So what ends up happening is actually a lot of southern states are going to have most of their debt paid off when all of this is accrued and then the United States says okay we're all going to pay all of this off together. So this move compiling all this debt and making all the states pay it off equally is going to make a lot of southern states mad. And the reason for that is because these southern states have paid most of their debts off. So if you will just jot that off to the side on your notes somewhere, this part of the plan, this first part where we amass all this debt, is going to upset southern states, okay? So Congress will approve, and as will Washington, of this part of the, uh, Hamilton's economic plan, and it's going to be passed. Next, Hamilton proposes that we uh, pass a protective tariff. This is going to be something that looks very similar to the Sugar Act that was passed by the British. What a tariff is, is a tax on imports. And so what Hamilton proposes is that we pass a protective tariff on any sort of foreign manufactured goods, any sort of finished products that are coming into the United States from a foreign country. And the reason for that is he wants American industry to be successful. But it's a whole lot more difficult when your industry is really small to have competitive products. Just think about like a, uh, for example, a ma and pa shop, little corner store where you can get groceries. They're going to be a little bit more expensive than say like the Walmart down the road that makes, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars a year um, and has thousands of employees. You know, they have the money and means to drive prices down. So what Hamilton says is, well, since the American industry isn't big enough to compete, what we'll do is we'll just tax all these foreign products so that people will buy American goods instead, and that's going to cause American industry to grow. You know, you buy an American good, that money goes to an American business, that business grows and prospers, they can hire more people, they can do more work, make better products, produce more, and at the end of the day, it's a relatively good idea. Also, on top of that, Hamilton proposes that there is what's called an excise tax on whiskey. An excise tax is also called a sin tax. Um, it's base, uh, basically placed on things that are bad for you, that aren't necessarily good for you, and you don't have to buy. Uh, alcohol has an excise tax. Uh, tobacco products have an excise tax. Um, it's a tax that's placed on goods to try and curb behavior, try to get people not to purchase those particular things. So there's a tax that's passed on, an excise tax that's passed on whiskey as well. So what parts of this are going to be passed? The whiskey tax is going to be passed. Washington and Congress both approve of it. However, Hamilton's protective tariff is not going to pass because it is way, way, way too high. Um, it would have been good for American industry, but Congress just felt like the United States depended upon foreign manufactured products a little bit too much to pass that tariff. It would have been economic ruin. And lastly, the third part of this economic plan, Hamilton is going to propose a bank of the United States. And what that's going to do is it's going to regulate the money supply within the United States. And also it's going to loan money out to state banks. So there's all sorts of money that's kind of floating around the United States right now. Since the Articles of Confederation didn't give Congress the ability to tax or do anything with money, you have different states with different forms of currency. What the Bank of the United States is going to do is it's going to get rid of Georgia money and North Carolina money and Pennsylvania money and New Jersey money. And instead, there's going to be United States currency that's going to be worth the exact same amount all throughout the United States. So that's the first thing. It's going to regulate the money supply. 
Secondly, it's going to loan money out to state banks. Why would it do that? Why is that important? Well, those state banks, the money that they receive, think about how banks make money. They make money by loaning money out, gaining money off of the interest, right? So what's going to happen is these state banks now have more money they can loan out to businesses. Well, one of the things Hamilton wants to do is for American industry to grow. Well, that, how that happens is businesses have to grow. They, they need money to grow. Uh, for businesses to even exist, you have to get a loan or have a significant amount of money to even start, pay upfront costs, pay your employees and all that. So the Bank of the United States is going to allow these smaller state banks to loan money out so that new businesses can be born and can flourish and help American industry grow even more. So the Bank of the United States is going to regulate the money supply make sure there's a standard dollar all throughout the United States and it's going to loan money out to state banks to help businesses be born to be created and for American industry to flourish look at that fun little graphic I didn't know that was there all right Jefferson doesn't like this the reason that he doesn't like this is because he thinks it's on here is the bus but it's not an actual bus it's the Bank of the United States he argues it's unconstitutional why because there's nothing in the Constitution that says that Congress or anybody can create a bank of the United States. He thinks that it gives the federal government, because the bank is a federal institution, way, 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 way too much power. He thinks it's absolutely ridiculous. And he thinks it's unconstitutional, once again, because it's not in the Constitution. Hamilton, on the other hand, says, hey, no, Bank of the United States, it's a good thing. It is part of what's called the necessary and proper clause. Basically, it gives Congress the ability to pass laws and legislation that helps it do it uh, helps it do its job better. So, he says, "Hey, one of the things that Congress is supposed to do is regulate currency, and so the Bank of the United States it's necessary and proper. It's supposed to do that. Um, so we're going to be able to create the bank because it helps Congress to do its job to regulate currency, to control the economy, and all that." So Washington is going to agree with Hamilton, and he is going to pass or sign into, uh, in, into law after Congress has passed the law creating the Bank of the United States. So that's two, for, two out of three for Hamilton. He's going to get his Bank of the United States. He's going to get all of the debt compiled into one, have all the states pay it off. The only one that's not going to pass is the protective tariff. That does not pass. However, he does still get the whiskey tariff, or I'm sorry, the whiskey tax that is passed. So that's that. That is Hamilton's economic plan. Just to run through the Federalist Party and the things that they believe one more time. They believe everything Hamilton does, strong national government, loose interpretation of the Constitution. If it doesn't say we can't do it, then that means we can do it. They want a strong financial system, favors bank, uh, favors banks, favors industry, favors trade. Also, big one here, one to make sure to take note of, the Federalist Party is going to support having a good relationship with England. After war is going to break out with France for a little bit, the Federalists are going to look really, really good because of that, but that doesn't happen until the Adams administration. Jefferson on the other side, complete opposite. They're going to support the strong state governments, strict interpretation of the Constitution. They want state banks, smaller state-based banks, not a big bank of the United States. They don't like it. And they also want mostly egalitarian agricultural lifestyles, uh, small little farmers. You know, you have your own plot of land, your house, and you grow or make whatever it is you need. And then lastly, they're going to support France when war is going to break out later on with England. So when the War of 1812 rolls around and America is fighting um, Britain, they're going to look really good, the Democratic Republicans, because they side with France. So there's that, Hamilton's plan, and the Democratic Republicans, how they feel, and the Federalists, and how they feel.